it has not taken us very many months and I'm already stealing traffic from the other website just because Google's like finally another competitor. Yeah. I think Google wants the market to be competitive. Well, welcome back to another episode of Good Business. Uh, guys, I'm so excited to have my dear friend James Hall here with us today. This is going to be a great conversation. It's going to be um, a, a detailed conversation. We're going to talk about some really confusing topics, uh, the topic <laughs> of SEO. And I know that for every business leader out there, uh, this is something that you probably have heard you need to be doing, mm -hmm. um, but but you really haven't known um what, what it actually means to do SEO. In fact, for many years, I actually kind of referred to it as the black magic of marketing. It's that, that dark art that no one really understands and we're just hoping to figure it out. And, uh, so we're going to hear, or we're going to hear from James Hall today as he kind of demystifies that for us and takes the myth and puts in the reality. So James, thanks so much for being on the show today. Hey, it's, it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me on. Uh, it's always a joy jumping on a uh, good business and talking about uh, all things marketing and business. I love it. Awesome. So. Awesome. Well, for, for just the context of time, we're going to just dive right on in. So let's do it. Um, James, would you do me a favor, and for the audience here who who really hasn't hasn't figured out what SEO is, I mean, maybe they think it's just the website, and hey, I just need to make sure I write blogs or something sure. along those lines. Can you kind of tell people what SEO actually is? Sure. Yeah. So I, obviously, it's an acronym. stands for Search Engine Optimization, right? And so what I want to kind of just clearly say to people is, people are going to search engines, and they're trying to find answers to something. Right, And so optimizing your business to a search engine allows for you to rise to the top of those search engines so that when one of your audience uh, that you're looking for, that they can find you more easily. Right, That's, uh, that's the basic of what's going on when it comes to um, search engine optimization. And as far as you know, what is happening with SEO is you are trying to figure out primarily Google, we'll talk about that a little bit more, but primarily Google, you're trying to figure out how their alg algorithm works so that um, you can, uh, we call it backwards engineering, <laughs> you can backwards engineer the keywords that you want to show up for. You know, because you're a dentist, you don't want to show up for anything related to hair, for example, right? That, that, it's like a different world. So you want to make sure you're optimized towards your specific industry. And that is what search engine optimization, at the end of the day, that's your goal, is to be at the top of those search engines, specifically awesome. Google. No, that's great. That's great. <laughs> so why why would a business actually need SEO to be done? I mean, is, sure. it, is it only beneficial for the folks who are selling products or is the service industry, is that helpful uh, for, for, let's just say, industrial, for oil and gas or something like mm -hmm. that? Is that is SEO needed for every business? Yeah, great question. Um, I, I will gladly uh, tell everybody, you need to be doing uh, SEO for your business, regardless of industry. Um, and, and this is why. Uh, so many people go to these search engines to find answers for just everything. I mean, yeah. Uh, it's crazy how many people search for things on Google, um, even down something as simple as if you're someone who makes cookbooks. I mean, people are looking for recipes, for example, right? Um, but if you're a business, uh, say in the chiropractic space, right, you, you need to make sure you're doing SEO. Um, or if you're, I mean, any industry, the answer is, is you need to be doing it because your audience is trying to find answers to questions and they need someone to be able to step in and help solve their problem. And they're asking Google, hey, here's my problem. And the goal is, is for you to be showing up saying, hey, this is, I'm, I'm helping you with your problem. This is the services that I offer. I love that. I love yeah. that. So <clears throat> let's just talk about like a, a legitimate story here. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, in, in the SEO space over the years, we've seen um, uh, every industry represented, to be honest. I mean, service yeah. industry, finance, industrial, uh, consumer focused products. I mean, across the board for the agency realm, that mm -hmm. good agency um, has been involved in. Um, what has been kind of a success story that you've seen and and mm. where someone was kind of like, I'm not really re not really convinced about SEO, but we ran SEO for them and <laughs> and here they are, really successful. Yeah. is there is there a specific story that comes to mind? Yeah, actually, I think um, I would like to use an example. Um, let's talk about this is gonna sound really funny, but let's talk about uh, an RV park, right? Yeah. which, 
again, you just would not think would think about SEO, but a wonderful a client of ours came to us and was like, I need to do marketing. You know, what do we do? And we looked at them and said, are you in this for the long haul? And the guy's like, yes, I'm in this for the long haul. It's like, okay, SEO, let's do this. And launched a brand new website, zero, right? Like absolute zero SEO ranking, no power, no authority. I'll explain what all these things mean in a little bit, but you have to have a lot of different pillars that make up your SEO uh, portfolio, if you will. And just started out at, at nothing. And I'm sitting here today saying that not only is this person winning in the space, but at this moment in time with a good SEO campaign, they're beating people who ran a business for 20 years before they started their business. So wow. on the digital front, with the authority that you can build by doing an, an SEO campaign, you can actually send all the right signals to Google. For Google is now having to ask the question, wait a minute, I've seen this other website for 20 years, and here's this new website, but for whenever someone's typing in, you know, an RV park near me or in this region, Google's having to decide right now who's going to get the who's going to get the top result. That's powerful, right? That's really powerful when you think about how the digital space is different than um, say the old marketplace. I love that example and yeah. and it's so important to remember like that is the goal. Like if mm -hmm. you have a business, if you have um, a website, some sort of digital presence, I mean, it's it's so important that people actually find you. If you're not yeah. visible, it's pointless. Sure. So you might as well have not wasted the hours and hours and hours and hours and probably days on Squarespace building your own website because no one was going to ever see it. And so I think that's so mm -hmm. important is um, if you build a website, you've got to build the roads for people to find you. Absolutely. Um, so I, I always use this analogy of... Uh, you're you're building this beautiful website. You view it as a mansion in the wilderness. Yeah, I love this analogy. And if if you forget to build a road to get there, then not only will no, none of your clients and your friends yeah. and your family ever actually make it to your website, um, but but you may not actually either. And yeah. when you start going to Google and Googling yourself, you're gonna be like, hey, where am I? Yeah. Why is my competitor popping up first? Sure. And uh, so I think it's just so important that SEO happens. So that's great. I thank you. Thank you so much for that analogy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, I love it. So uh, when it comes to um, just like our experience uh, mm -hmm. in the space, I mean, I know James, we've we've been through quite a bit together, and mm -hmm. we'll talk about our background probably on another episode. <laughs> but um, but just very briefly, um, you and I, we we started working together, but not in the context that most of our audience would expect. <laughs> we started working together first off at a summer camp in high school. Uh, mm -hmm. But fast forward a little bit, and we weren't really. I mean, we were friends, but we weren't like close friends sure. until. Uh, we went through Haiti together mm -hmm. and we, we lived in Haiti for a season together. And um, so it was through that, that we, we kind of obviously uh, learned how to communicate and work with each other and Absolutely. go through hard things and what have you. Um, but, but it's a, quite a far cry from uh, laying pathways and cutting uh, routes through jungles uh, to, to actually cutting routes from uh, websites to websites yeah. online. So yeah, yeah. Uh, how, how have you actually, seen your experience, um, let me rephrase that. How have you seen your um, trajectory in your career kind of put you into this position where you have all this knowledge and expertise um, on the SEO front? And mm -hmm. uh, w w what's kind of your approach to, to all of that? I know that's a deep question, but I'd it love is. to... Well, let me, let me answer it like this. I grew up with a wonderful father, and uh, he, I cannot tell you how many times in my life, I was working on, you name it, fixing a car... I don't know, digging a trench in the backyard, whatever was going on, and I would bump into a problem. And I would tell my dad, this is the problem. And he would go, that's great, James. Now solve it. And I, <laughs> and I, and I greatly appreciate that. And I know it sounds really simple, but when we were in Haiti, we had a huge problem with the, with the routes to get up and down the mountainside so people could move things so that the, ca the camp could actually work. Mm -hmm. And so the problem was is we needed a bunch of like roads up and down the mountainside. And so what I had to sit there and figure out was how are we going to make roads on the side of a mountain that floods and like washes out all the time. So we had to make roads that were adaptable to heavy rain. Um, so in some respects, I was backwards engineering all the problems to figure out what we needed to do. Yep. And then once we knew what we needed to do, then it was implementation. And it is oddly similar to how SEO works in regards to once you know what your problem is and you're, you know what you're trying to accomplish, you need to, you need to backwards engineer down to what you need to be and then you implement those things and then you watch it, if you will, kind of move and connect all those knots. So yeah. that is probably the, the clearest way to explain the relationship between how I used to think at a much younger age but how they, they apply perfectly to what's happening on the SEO space and what kind of... 
um, brings about, I think some people are like, well, how do you, how do you, how do you learn this or whatever? It's like, well, it's not a matter of learning. It's really more of a matter of being relentless in the pursuit of problem solving and realizing that you're working with a machine. And I think we can, we can, we can make that machine work for us. And, uh, and that's what's happening on the SEO front. I love so. that. I love that. So that's, that's all theoretical. That yeah. sounds great. Problem solving. I love that. I mean, yeah. And, and it makes sense why you enjoy what you do so much, sure. because <laughs> since the beginning, it's been all about problem solving. But um, we know that SEO is is going to be very different for one organization over another based sure. off of competition, based off of industry. What is an example? And, and maybe maybe I'll just... Uh, uh, give you a, a little bit of a, a easy answer here. Um, so, so you and I, we, we obviously run Good Agency together, mm-hmm. and um, we were talking about a client recently, um, national client, um, had terrible SEO um, for how long? I mean, they'd probably been thirty years, I think, uh, 20, I think so. 30 years in business, and uh, and terrible SEO because they'd never done it right. They'd never mm-hmm. actually followed the rules. Yeah, sure. Um, and so they're. Their other competitor, really the only other national competitor that we're going after, they're ranking obviously very mm-hmm. well. Um, and you you did a little backwards engineering, problem solving, because yeah. we're like, how do we beat that competitor? Sure. And um, we'll just uh, I'm not going to name the name of the actual client, but uh, we're talking about like a accreditation group essentially for yeah. uh, for schools. So so I mean we're in that realm of. There's only a few competitors, yep. but if they're a competitor, they've got some serious weight behind them. So yeah. t- tell us a little bit about that so that, that problem that, that you recently ran across and uh, what the solution is to sure. that kind of problem. Okay, so in SEO, um, it's always good for you to understand who your competitors are yeah. and maybe seeing what Google is doing to them uh, to give them so much love in regards to them showing up for just so many search results. Mm-hmm. And um, so what we did is... It's actually possible on a website that's not one that you own for you to just scrape. It's called scraping it. You get to scrape their website and learn about what's happening on their on their website. So we went naturally, grabbed their, the competitor, ran a bunch of analysis, and did a lot of deep diving. At the bottom of the deep dive, what we learned was that that, that website was bringing in 15,000 organic traffic users to the website, which just per month, per month, yeah, yeah which is just so much, that's right? A lot of traffic, that's a lot of organic traffic. So they are they are the uh, pillar. Uh, that's this website that's the competitor and i was looking at i was like where's the weak spot in this in this what's happening because it seems like just google just gave them all the love because no one else was there and what we discovered was was that um most of that traffic 82 percent of that traffic went to just one page (laughs) and it's because parents uh were looking for accreditation schools near those schools that were accredited you know so they found this website and they were looking for it was like a registry or a a registry of a bunch of a bunch of different ones and so uh the answer is at that point is i realized like even on that then you have to look at the page and you have to evaluate what's on their page that makes Mm -hmm. them so great um and so we were able to backwards engineer and say okay Google's associating this page with all of the, these keywords. So what are we going to do? Uh, we're going to make a page that also optimizes for all those keywords and the other ones that they're not optimizing for. Yep. And I'm very glad to say that it has not taken us very many months, and I'm already stealing traffic from the other website. Just because Google's like, finally, another competitor. Because yeah. I think Google wants the market to be competitive. Um, and I think that they like being able to serve up more options than just one yeah. to their to, you know, to their audience. And so we're quickly gaining on all of the primary keywords and the secondary ones that they're not paying attention to. Because yeah. they are not running any They're not, running they're not any paying attention to their SEO. No. And yeah. they, actually, they actually made a mistake. <laughs> actually, this is like a fun like side note. They yeah. actually made a mistake that worked in their advantage, I found out the other day, technically which was just really funny. I was like, this is a, a fun mistake that now I'll get to do the same thing and uh, really optimize yeah. it down. Well, so. and I, I think the, the main takeaway from that is uh, Google has a, a certain customer base mm-hmm. and Google doesn't care about uh, that accreditation group. It doesn't care about nope. you as a financial advisor, as an attorney, or as a <laughs> chiropractor or as some sort of consumer. Yep. They don't care about you. What they care about, Google cares about giving their customers the best possible experience. Yeah. So that's why SEO plays not just in um, all the pillars, which you're about to talk about, but mm-hmm. um, but it plays into your website. Mm-hmm. If you have a website that is giving their customers a bad experience, guess what? They're not going to put your website up top. Mm-hmm. So it, 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 if you haven't updated your website for two years, I know that that seems like pretty recent, but if you haven't updated your website for two years, well, Google has updated probably 20 times over the past two years. And so yeah. um, it's it's so imperative that you stay on top of your website. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, 
you will fall out yeah. in regard to rankings and sure. you will struggle. Yeah. And if there's no competition in the case of this, this competitor to mm-hmm. our client, you're going to stay at, at the top. But the moment someone starts taking it seriously, we see the results that we've, no, we've been able to bring to our client. Yeah. So, which yeah. is amazing. So what, with, with all that being said, I, I'd love if you could talk a little bit about the winning plan, because sure. one of the things, uh, we're an EOS business, mm-hmm. um, and so one of the uniques is we consistently win for our clients. Sure. And I mean, I started this company 14 years ago, almost 15 years ago. Yeah. Um, so, so to be able to say that we consistently win for our clients is... Um, is something that we're re- very proud of yeah, sure. because we love helping our clients. I mean, we don't want to just sell a service that may or may not work. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and SEO is such a, a critical part of that. I'd love it if you could walk through what that winning yeah. approach is. Yeah. Um, this is going to sound uh, maybe a little bit boring. And I hope, I hope to a business owner, so if you're listening to this, like listen to this, uh, a good SEO plan is a simple plan and one that is consistent. So that's something I can definitely say in the SEO space. The reason that we have developed winning plans for our clients over the course of so many years is because at the end of the day, the search engine wants to give its customers, like you just said, the best experience. Yeah. And your website needs to say those words. It needs to actually say what what that in search engine serving up and connecting the dots. You need to have pages that are what that person is looking for. Mm-hmm. And if you don't, and if your pages look bad, I mean, Google will uh, scan your website for design. It'll scan it for easy to read. It scans it for lots of different things. And if your website's not tuned in, maybe it's the right yeah. word, um, then it's really gonna it's really gonna fail. So the the strategy there is first of all aligning with making sure that you're not doing keywords that the client doesn't go after. Yep. And at at that moment, then saying, okay, which of these keywords goes to which pages? You optimize those pages for what they need to be, and you hit the ground running. Um, there's a lot more to the backside of that. That's um, you know building backlinks and checking your on page and uh, reviewing uh, the newest Google updates and making sure that um, like the review one that came out this last spring, like making mm-hmm. sure that whenever Google makes an algorithm update, you're changing to those at the right time. But probably the biggest trick that's hard for business owners in SEO is to not change too fast, yeah. right? I mean, I feel like in business, my my days are short, my years, I'm sorry, my years are short, my days are long, right? So it, when it comes to business saying, oh, hey, a new algorithm dropped, right? Then we got to make, the, we got to change to the, you know, whatever Google post <laughs> on their, on their Twitter feed, you got to change it like right now. And the answer is, is no, do not do that. Mm. Yeah. So when it comes to winning for your clients, you have to know how to roll out your strategy. Um, and the reason it's, it's been consistent for us over so many years is that we don't over pivot to yeah. the newest trend because, you know, Google, uh, back in 2022 20, penalized AI content, uh, like bad, you know, and then uh, you roll into the future. Now they're trying to say that, uh, the, you know, that is perfectly fine all of a sudden, you yeah. know, and you're like, well, it hurt me not that long ago. And, yeah. you know, and so for us on our end, it's like, how do you move but not move too fast? So you don't get hit with the big hits when Google's mad at somebody. But at the same time, right, right. you get to utilize tools like the, you know, the future of AI and uh, the different copy tools that we've used for years. So anyway, yeah, really, uh, that's the winning strategy is not over pivoting too fast, having a consistent drum beat um, and having someone who as, as, as on top of the ball when it comes to like, what are you going after, you know, and, and doing that. So it's a great question. Question. And business owners, when they're listening to this, I hope I hope that they hear SEO is a commitment. It is a commitment that is worth making because you you can win for for yourself and for for your business. So I love that, and and um, I think it is important also when we're talking about commitment. You start an SEO campaign, you're not going to see results immediately. I mean, yeah, it takes time. It does. And the thing is, though, it's it's a freight train, and when you get that freight train moving, eventually you're going to start to see those results pour in. Oh, pour in. And uh, so, absolutely, wouldn't couldn't agree more. Yeah. Okay, you mentioned something, AI. Sure. AI is changing everything mm. right now, and I know that <clears throat> it's it's pretty much in the space right now where um, uh, I'm probably saying the same thing that about a billion other marketers are saying right now, yeah. AI is changing everything. Changing everything it's, yeah. the, it's a new world. It's uh, mm-hmm. a game changer. Um, it's revolutionizing. Yeah. But the thing is, it's true. It is revolutionizing yeah. marketing. So how does that impact businesses and marketers alike sure. um, from an SEO perspective? Yeah. Uh, you touched on it. I'd love, to, I'd love to dive into that a little bit well, more. Well, let me, let me give a, just a quick example. And let me give just a couple of facts too, real quick. So the 
one of the weird facts I shared with you not too long ago was that since the AI revolution of, of uh, November of 2022, um, Google search actually has continued to go up, mm. which is just fascinating because most people meaning, are like... Meaning there are more people on more Google people search utilizing on Google. Google. Yes, Google, not, not, not AI. Not ChatGPT. Yeah, and not BART or, yeah, or yeah. You know, all, all, all the AI stuff. So, so you have this rise still in search volume. So I think anybody who looks at the AI revolution and is thinking it's all going to change so fast, yeah. I think we have to remember that all of us had to talk our parents into using Google at one point. And in the same way, at some point, people are going to have to be talked into to using AI, um, so that will that will happen. It will happen faster than what yes. happened with Google, much faster. But still, it's going to take time for people to adapt to a new way. Um, then once Google starts to introduce their AI into their platform, I'll talk about that in just a second. But I want to talk about the impact. Probably one of the, the biggest things about SEO's relationship to AI. I like to use this example. I Google searched what on, on AI. Sorry, I didn't Google. So this was an AI search. What's the best uh, ice cream store in my town? And it popped up a really really old Dairy Queen. It was really weird. And I I was like, okay, odd. So then I started like asking people around, like, hey, where's the best, where's the best ice cream in town? You know, like, oh, you know, it's this one over here. But everybody kept saying, oh, when I was a kid, though, I went to that Dairy Queen. And so what's interesting about AI is that it is truly a, a machine that takes a ton of data and consolidates it down to just one ultimate answer. It feels very ultimate in its mm -hmm. d in Unless delivery. Unless you ask for like the top three. Yeah, yeah, sure, five. sure. Yeah. Yeah, but if you're just asking for an answer, it gives you the its one believable answer. Uh, whether it's true or not in regards to is the Dairy Queen ice cream actually the best in town? No. Uh, but is it the place that everyone at some point went to? Sure. So it's giving you this ultimatum. Google search gives you all these options, right? It gives you the top 10 and then 20, and then mm -hmm. at that point you're on the dead list, you know? So you're, you might as well not exist, right? On the yeah. second page of Google. Um, and so when it comes to what's happening with AI is um, people are using it, but it's still not doing what people really want it to do yet in regards to giving them options to look at and choose from unless they specifically ask for them. Right. And like, you know how to use AI. So yeah. like, you're going to do that. But other people are like, I don't know, I'm just asking <laughs> questions and things are just popping up and it's great. And they, it's, yeah. it's, 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 a, it's a wonderful tool. So AI, what, it, what will happen, in my opinion, with AI in regards to SEO is that everyone should know that AI at the end of the day is actually still using the foundational uh, elements that SEO uses. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, it's a search engine. It's a search engine. Yeah. And what are, they, what are they pulling from? They're pulling from blog articles and pages that are on the web, right? Things that have been written down. So the foundational elements are the same. So when you are doing SEO, and I can say this very confidently, you are also doing AI optimization. I know that sounds really weird. And I'm sure mm. people will get mad at me and say, oh, that's not true, James. But it is, because <clears> at the end of the day, that search engine is just compiling all of the information that it sees online. And if you aren't saying the right things and you don't have your website optimized to what you do, and you're saying something that's not actually what you do. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest mistake people make is on their website, they try to sound like there's something else rather than what they're what they're really truly being. I mean, uh, just as a note, I mean, at one point we ran a business and we were trying to tell people we were... Uh, in a space, I'll, I'll use an example of uh, weddings. We were trying to say that we yeah, were wedding films. Yeah, we were wedding cinematographers or wedding film, <laughs> which is fine. There are some people who search for that. But I mean, by large volumes, we were wedding videographers and a video team. And they, that's what the brides thought we were. Mm -hmm. And so because that's what they thought they were, we needed on our website to say the words videographer, you know, and, and say that clearly, even though we did not want to. We were like, no, we're not just we're a video guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we're these great <laughs> filmmakers. Um, yeah. And so that's, that's a common mistake. And so even more so with AI, if you're not clear on your website what you are and people are asking for, you know, what's the best 10 businesses in Houston for, you know, your industry financial advising or whatever. Yeah. If your website's not optimized for it, you're not going to show up in the AI results in the same way that you're not showing up in the Google results. So Yeah. And, and you know, it's it's interesting to that point because I did a test for someone who I was talking to about SEO. Sure. And uh, they were a financial advisor in the Woodlands. And um, just, to, just to check it out, I was like, hey, ChatGPT, what are the top three uh, financial advisors in the Woodlands? Mm -hmm. And when you go and cross-reference that to Google's top three, they were the same. So I, I for, uh, I, like 100, and obviously it's going to all change over time. Sure. So it may, it may, it may not be the case long term. Yeah. But I think you're right though, when it comes to the, the actual SEO mm -hmm. practices, it, it's the same thing. It's teaching yeah. um, these search engines, these, these algor algorithms. Yeah how to organize the information that's online. Yeah, and sure. we just want to make sure that we're popping up number one. So. Yeah, and let me mention this, because I mentioned earlier I wanted to clarify something. So with AI, there's going to be a relationship when Google releases Bard in full on yeah. their platform. I do think that there's going to be a shift in how AI lives on Google. And so yeah. being the, the top of the organic search on Google 
when people use AI, that's going to be an interesting development to see what happens. The most yeah. recent developments are that uh, you being number one on Google organically still puts you like in first view. Yeah. So they're, as of this moment, I'm not seeing them trying to do something weird where they're going to put ads up first and then AI and then organic and then you know local map paths and all that get pushed down. If you don't know this, you know, go to Google, search something, and right. you'll, you've got these different uh, layers of Google's homepage, and you always, at the very end, you see the first result on the front, you know, um, and I think that's going to stay from everything I'm I saying. I agree, and because, I mean, ChatGPT is different than Google in that, and, and ChatGPT is just one of many, because yeah. there's a paid option. Yes, exactly. And so that's going to be what helps um, overcome that that. Mm -hmm. that pay gap pay that, gap. that sure. currently exists yeah. um, in Google. So, um, no, that's great. Okay, so so moving on, there's another topic that I want to talk about and we haven't touched on yet, and it's this concept of entities. Oh, entities, um, yeah. And that sounds really spooky, especially yeah. when we're Ooh. talking about the black magic of SEO, the entities. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but in reality, uh, there are entities, business brands, personal brands. How do those play into Google? And, and is it important to, to, let's just say, have an entity for your yep. CEO of your organization, just the same as you have for your business? Great, great question. Okay, so let's talk about trust, okay? okay. So this all has to do with trust with entities. Um, Google is trying to ask the question, are you trustworthy? Hmm. And it used to be able to say that just by scanning a website and being like, oh, well, you, you seem trustworthy, we'll put you up at the top. But what Google's doing now is they're asking themselves the question, okay, is this brand you know, connected to some person who they can see and identify and has their own website. And they're like, okay, this person is real. This person has influence. They'll scan social media accounts and people are following them. This person is trustworthy in the subject of X subject, you know. Um, and then when you connect that person back to a particular website and brand and Google's making that connection, your trust goes up, mm. right? So you've got this thing called I'm going to be kind of nerdy here for a second. So for all you guys listening on the business front, you're like, James, give me some some nuggets in regards to like, what what do I need to look for? What's the base the baseline of what Google's you know SEO wants? Uh, it's called EEAT, okay? Uh, expertise, experience, authority, and trust. And that is the foundation of the core of, of all things mm -hmm. SEO. So when you can get your trust to be higher, you will rise higher in SEO results, okay? Really? Um, and so that's what the entity does. It brings you trust. And so you might be saying, well, how does that, how, how can I do that with my business? And if you're the business owner, probably the answer is, is you need to start being an entity online and mm. being the trust person and, and speaking at events and showing up to those things that you're always like, I don't know if I really want to get in front of people and say something, but if you're the authority, right? So again, authority, trust, you know, experience and expertise. If you're that person, for your business and people came to you to do business with you because you're that person, it, it's time that you start picking up a microphone <clears throat> yeah. and talking to people and getting on Wikipedia and doing those things so that your trust, your authority, your experience, and your expertise of you as an individual starts to be seen by Google. You connect that to a website that's your website for your business and all of a sudden you start going up in the rankings because, and the more people you can have, this is why people pay for sponsors from, I don't know, uh, JJ Watt with HEB or whatever, yeah. right? Like, I mean, there's a reason that they it's do shared that. authority. It's shared authority. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So that's Brilliant. that's happening online now more than it's ever happened before, um, and so that's really cool to see to see that happen. So. so, so the key takeaway for entity talk is you've got to make sure that it's not just your business that has the authority, yeah. um, but the key players in that business have that same authority. Absolutely. That's vital. Absolutely. So. And the more people you can raise up, you know, that might sound a little scary to a business and now, this owner. is very small and me small to medium-sized business. Sure. I mean, larger businesses, uh, that's a different strategy altogether. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Um, but but for small to medium size, you've got to position yourself as that authority. Yeah. And, and we're not talking just about SEO here. We're talking about positioning from a branding perspective, which I'm sure mm -hmm. we'll talk about on another episode. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Um, but, but even with the context of how AI is evolving and how Google's algorithm is, is uh, tracking what is said in video content mm -hmm. um, and what is on your website, you've got to make sure that your website is conveying that authority. So you've got to have video, you've got to yep. have authentic content that's not the same stock photo that was used on 25,000 other websites. Absolutely. You've got to have something that is consistently authentic and authoritative. Absolutely. So... I love that. Okay. All right. So as we kind of wrap up, because I don't even know how, well, how we're doing on time. I'm having, I'm having too much fun in yeah, this conversation. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, as the digital landscape is, is changing uh, with the evolution of AI and with um, who, know, who knows what else is about to come out, um, where do you envision the future of marketing heading? 
Um, I know that's a big question, a but let's question, talk yeah. about it in the context of SEO, if we okay. can, just to kind of narrow it in a little bit on that field of vision. Um, what should businesses focus on? Yeah. And um, and where, where do you think that, that that is heading? Well, and, and I'm thankful to, that this answer uh, on my end is this. Um, best practices since, actually in my mind, since when Google first launched their algorithm, um, is the same best practices you can use today. Yes, you can do you know, additional tweaks and things. Mm -hmm. Um, but at the end of the day, you've got to have authoritative backlinks coming to your business. Yep. Uh, otherwise Google's going to be like, no one trusts you. You don't have an authority. Yeah. No one knows who you are. Even just a basic chamber of commerce link. Like, yeah. you know, that's like, if I, if I was telling people, where, does, where do I start with my business? Go get, go to the local chamber and just have them link to your website so that Google gets at least one solid signal. You actually are real. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, that'd be a good starting place place for most businesses. I think you're the first marketer that has ever said that you need to uh, be a part of the chamber of commerce. Yes. Um, and I'll be the second. I agree. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah. th th if that's the only value that the chamber offers, absolutely, it, it is it. totally worth yeah, it. It's totally worth it. Um, and so, you know, so where do I see marketing going? Because uh, AI is changing; it, it really yeah. is changing everything. Um, and we've been, you know, I mean, we were using. I, I always smile about this. We were using AI before everyone knew what AI was, you know. Yeah. And I'm thankful for that. Um, but and I'll say this: when it comes around the subject of SEO, with AI's introduction in regards to like ChatGPT features and like the, the unbelievable things you can do, like find the details of like a bolt you need for a random piece of something you buy from Ikea or something. Like it's insane how detailed what AI can do for you, right? Um, when it comes to SEO and to businesses, I think of it like this. The good news is, is that the foundational basics are actually the same. Mm. And if you talk to someone who's been in the space of SEO for a long time, like a decade, they'll tell you, Hey, SEO is SEO. Like, in the end of the day, if you're not putting down the, the words of who you are in the business, the system's not going to know who you are. And the, you know, Google's a multi billion, I think, a multi billion dollar business. Like, they've got everything around the, this, the, this algorithm is their business. And so they're not going to just throw it out the window. Well, I hope they don't just throw it out. That, <laughs> that, would, that would be crazy. That I would, would laugh. At that insane. point, I would have a different discussion on this podcast. Yeah. But at this moment, assuming all things Google, basically they stay the same and they continue to push you know, experience, expertise, authority, and trust, then what the question you need to ask yourself is, how am I giving signals to these machines called, you know, algorithms that are, you know, giving, serving people these answers? How am I telling the digital space that I am this, the way that I am, yeah. right? And, and who you are in the space. And I think if you can figure out how to consistently do that, and it, it's the consistency that I think that yeah. most business people have the hardest time with. They're like, well, why am I going to sign up with you? Why can't I just go do SEO on your, by yourself? You can go do SEO by yourself. Absolutely. Yeah, go, go, go do it. You're going to have a hard time building backlinks and doing some other best practices. But as far as like the basic on-page stuff, yeah, you can change your keywords. Um, obviously making a better design, like being a competitive designer, those things matter. Yeah. Um, but in regards to how I see the market going forward and like answering, I wanted to lay that all out so I could yeah. say, with that being said, what does the next five years look like to me? Um, I see AI being very integrated into all search engines. I think that uh, they will be using AI to make their search engines, I use the word more user-friendly. Um, so whenever someone's asking a dumb question, it's going to jump to conclusions because it's seen that before and say, oh, are you actually asking for this information? And maybe giving a couple different types of answers because sometimes people don't ask clear yeah. questions. Yeah. So I think it'll be a more friendly user experience on these search engines. Um, I foresee there being actually more competition because we are going into the AI space. You know, Google owns right at 90 to 91% of the search engine volume, which is just insane saying when you think about market share, it's like they are the yeah. search engine. I think AI will disrupt that a little bit, and I think the percentages will shift around a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, just because I see people like Windows, you know, like being at Microsoft, like being able yeah. to actually integrate that into like your email and stuff. It's just, it changes the way you use the tools, and so I feel like that will be the case in regards to the, the shift. But I don't think that the foundational algorithm is going to have some large implementation on it that's going to shake the foundation of right. what is good SEO and what is good content so that AI uses it. Well, so. and, and I I couldn't agree more because at least in America, yep. at least here in the U.S., um, we love to have freedom of choice. Yes. We love to have options. Um, and we want them fast mm -hmm. and we want, we want options. So, yeah. so I don't think we're going to move into this space where you're going to just say, Hey, uh, chat GPT, tell me where to go for dinner tonight. I mean, maybe uh, you will, if you're yeah. refusing to make decisions or overwhelmed in life or something, but, but in general, you're going to say, Hey, I need 
three or five options within mm-hmm. this category. So I think optimization is going to be even more crucial. Mm-hmm. Um, so I couldn't agree more, though, that that foundation is not going to change. And let me let me say, let me second what you just said because yeah. I don't, I want to say it real clearly. Um, Hyper local. Yes. I think will also be more important as time goes on. Back of we're bringing back Main Street. We're bringing back Main Street yep. into each individual, you know, small region that you're in. Absolutely, uh, it's definitely the case, and I think that people they long for that. So that's why the whole searching dot near me, yeah, is just insane. Yeah, you know, like it's just so many searches for that. So. Love it, love it. Okay, all right. So now that everyone knows you, James, um, <laughs> and knows that you are authoritative, you have the expertise. Um, and uh, I think it's important for you to give people a little bit of an overview of who you are. Um, can oh. you tell me your background? Can you tell me um, your current role and what you do? Sure, sure. Uh, yeah. So my name uh, is James, and I am the vice president of production at Good Agency. Uh, gosh, I've been here uh, working for since 2015, which uh, years is almost a decade, which is great. Um, and I absolutely love it. My background, um, funny enough, actually came out of ministry uh, and then got into um, the the business world and impacting you know the world for good through business, which I just it's a it's a joy to do, you yeah. know, and to be to be a, a light. And to encourage people um, in the space of business, because I feel like business gets this bad rap for just being this dog eat dog world, you know, capitalism yeah. at all costs. And uh, and you can you can go around and yeah. you can care for people and serve them, and it just echoes. Like it just it's so wonderful. Um, and so specifically around the SEO, I mean, since I sat in the seat of you know head of operations production, um, we had a, we had a wrangle, you know, this subject of of SEO. <laughs> and uh, throughout the years, I've been very thankful to have a wonderful team. So Supporting, uh, you know, what we're doing and learning from it, and being at the for the forefront of what was happening when it first started, um, and so. You mentioned winning for our team. I'm very proud that over the years, our team has delivered for people on SEO because mm-hmm. um, we do the foundations right, and and we consistently do them. You know, yeah. and we're not, and we're, and, and it's a simple plan. But once you dial it in. You you let you let it go, and yeah. all of a sudden Google just starts to eat it up because Google wants that. Google needs SEO experts yeah. because it, it, we optimize and we help their algorithm even more. You yeah. know? and so in the same way, I'm very thankful that I've had such a wonderful team that I've worked with and around to to deliver this, and even more so. It's just been a lot of fun. Obviously, in my role, I do a lot of things outside of just SEO. I mean, we do video production, website design, uh, website development uh gosh we have so many wonderful services that we have ai uh, list building is one of my favorite new ones because it's incredible to get to use those services um and what we do is we develop these strategies for people and we say you know do you need seo you know do you do you want to do you need paid advertisement um and then uh, my favorite is messaging which i'm sure uh there'll be many discussions um when it comes to your future uh, episodes about you know why do you need a message and i'll say this Messaging and SEO are not disconnected. They yeah. are connected. You've got to be able to make sure you're giving people a clear message when they land on that page. And uh, if there's something that I feel like I'm like truly a, a niched SEO person, it's actually that subject. Yeah. Taking technical SEO and bridging the gap to good story branding messaging, so that when someone lands on your website, you're not they're not like this is a boring page. Like, <laughs> golly, like the text is killing me. It's technically right, but it's it's not enjoyable. Yeah. And you've got to make sure your stuff's uh, an enjoyable experience for people to enter, enter, you know, get into a story. Um, and so, yeah, it's just been a joy uh, over it. all these years. Well, James, thanks so much for being on the show today. And Absolutely. Uh, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. If you want to connect with James um, or the Good Agency team, visit our website, www.goodagency.com. Um, or you can email James directly, james at goodagency.com. I'm sure he'd love to chat with you about SEO and helping your business achieve your growth goals. So uh, with that, I think that's a wrap for today. Uh, We'll see you guys next time on Good Business. Thanks again, James. Thanks, Clay. 